So for number 18, we want to take the area bounded between these two curves and um, revolve it about the line x is equal to 1. So I've gone ahead and I've drawn the two curves, and we can see that the area here is this um, part that's shaded in yellow. So when we revolve it about the line x is equal to 1, um, what is going to happen here is we're going to have these this little section here that's the difference between these two heights, and it's going to get revolved around like so. So it's going to form a cylinder. Um, and then the cylinder, as we, as we go on further and further on the x-axis, we're going to have these um, different cylinders like so, uh, that are going to wrap like this. And then when we add all of these, it's going to give us a volume. Uh, let me just remove that so it doesn't get too cluttered. So we can see here that the volume of this revolution, the volume is going to be the sum. Um, so we are integrating of ax dx. And why is it an ax? Well, think of this cylinder here. When we unwrap it, it's like an infinitely thin sheet of paper um, wrapped around the line x is equal to 1. And so this does have an area. And it is an area as a function of the x, because as we move along the x-axis, that cylinder is going to change. Um, as we move further and further here, the, the base is going to get bigger, and so on. Um, so, now that we have this, the first thing that we need to do is actually find the bounds of our integration, right? And these bounds are defined by this point here and this point, um, where the curves intersect. So the first thing that we're going to do is set these curves equal to each other so that we can found those, find those boundaries. Um, so, x squared is equal to 2 minus x squared. I'm going to bring everything over to the left. So, 2x squared minus 2 is equal to 0. And now I'm going to factor. So x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. And then this is a difference of squares. So I have 2x minus 1. Um, x plus 1 is equal to 0. And therefore, x is equal to negative 1 or 1. So now that we have this, um, we do have the boundaries for our, air, our um, volume where we're summing up the areas, right? So that's from negative 1 to positive 1. Okay, so now that we have this, the last thing that we need is to be able to express this area um, as as a function of x, because we're summing up all these all these um, cylinders that have like these sheets of paper. Um, and so let's see how we're going to find this. The first thing that we're going to do, I'm going to put that in a different color, maybe in green. Uh, we're going to see this section here in green, right? This section is going to be um, this height. And as we can see here, this height is just, let me zoom in. Um, this height is just the height of the blue curve. So the height of the blue curve minus the height of the pink curve, right? If I take this, this large stretch in black and I subtract this tiny one, I'm going to be left with that green section, which is what I want. So we can see here that the little green section is whatever uh, the blue curve is minus the pink curve. So uh, this part right here is given by the blue curve, so 2 minus x squared, and then minus the pink curve, so minus x squared. And let's talk about the base. Um, as you can see here, the base is this... Uh, the base of the cylinder, which actually ends up being just the circumference, right? It is a circle. So... Uh, this is the circumference given by 2 pi r. That's the circumference of any circle. However, we don't want this in terms of r because we're integrating with respect to x, right? Um, so let's think about how we can express this radius in terms of x. I'm going to go ahead and delete this radius. And let's think about that. Um, well, basically, my radius is going to go from x is equal to 1 all the way out, right? So maybe let me... Let's suppose that we're at here, at x is equal to 1 quarter. Well, the difference, the distance from here all the way out to there, um, that is going to be, I begin at 1, and then I go 1 minus 1 quarter, right, to give me 3 quarters. So no matter where I'm at, um, maybe if I were somewhere closer at x is equal to 3 quarters, I would go the distance of 1 minus 3 quarters, right? Um, to, to give us, because if I go 1 minus 3 quarters, I'm going to get 1 quarter, which is this little chunk here. Um, so, let me erase all this stuff. 
It would be different uh, if I were measuring the radius from the origin, right? If I were measuring, for example, if I'm here at x is equal to, um, to 3 quarters. If I were measuring from the origin, then it would just be 3 quarters. But since I'm measuring it um, from the other side, I'll do it in purple, I'm going to go 1, because I begin at 1, and then minus this value, 1 minus 3 quarters, to get this little chunk here that's 1 quarter. So, uh, I was a bit redundant, but hopefully you guys can um, understand what I meant. So, once we have this, we know that the radius here is just um, the radius 2 pi, and then 1 minus x, right? Because 1 minus wherever I'm at on my x-axis. So, um, let's just clean this up a little bit. 2 minus x squared minus x squared is 2 minus 2x squared, right? Um, for some reason, it's not letting me erase it, so that is weird. Let me try something else. Um, okay, so I'll write that this is equal to 2 minus 2x squared. All right, so we have a um, height and we have a base. And we know that area is equal to base times height, which is equal to 2 pi um, times 1 minus x times 2 minus 2x squared. Um, and since we are going to integrate it, uh, we do have to expand this so that we can integrate it in a nice way, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply these two. So I have 2 pi and then 1 times 2. I'm going to foil it out like this, so 1 times 2, that gives us 2, and then 1 times minus 2, minus 2x squared, and then minus x with 2, uh, minus 2x, and then minus x with minus 2x, plus uh, 2x cubed. And then when I simplify this, um, actually, no, that's already in the most simplified form possible. So now that I have my expression for an area, right, this is ax, basically this whole thing gives me the area of, um, of the sheet that wraps around the cylinder at any point in my x-axis. So once I have this, I'm ready to just put it in my integral. So we have that volume is equal to the integral from negative 1 um, to positive 1, of 2 pi that goes outside, and inside we have um, 2 minus 2x squared um, minus 2x, and then plus 2x cubed, and all of this times, um, times dx. So when I integrate it, I'm going to get 2 pi times, this is 2x minus 2x cubed over 3, minus 2x squared over 2, and then plus 2x to the power of 4 over 4, and all of this evaluated from negative 1 to positive 1. Um, and so let's simplify this. This is equal to 2 pi times, we're going to evaluate it first at 1, so that is 2 minus 2 thirds minus 2 over 2 is 1, plus 2 over 4, that is um, plus 1 half. And then we're going to go minus minus, right? Minus one times minus, so that gives us um, that gives us plus two. Let me just correct this. And then minus 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 is going to give us a negative, so minus two thirds. And then this minus one becomes positive, um, so minus minus is positive, so plus one. And lastly, uh, minus one half. Yeah, minus one half. So when we simplify this, this is going to give us two pi. Um, I'm going to join this everything in my calculator, and this gives me, let's see, that's eight thirds. So the final answer is going to be 16 pi over three. And that is, um, that is my volume when I take this area and I revolve it around the line x is equal to positive one.